Hello everybody, I'm SP, and since everyone's talking about it, I guess so will I. Boogie2988 is a YouTuber who's fallen from grace on the level of Shane Dawson. I think uh, if the, the dictionary ever decided to adopt the term locale, uh, an example they would use would be Boogie. Now, I don't know everything about the Ballad of Boogie, but I heard it's cringe. And so because it's cringe, we gotta check it out. Boogie was recently featured on a documentary, uh, and apparently it does the opposite of painting him in a good light. You know, just some of the worst stuff about this human being has come out. Uh, now, are we gonna watch it? Heavens no, that's very long. I've already seen bits and pieces of it, so it'd be weird to react to it. Um, but we're actually gonna react to somebody else watching it and almost have like a bit of dis a discussion with him. But do make sure to check out um, the documentary. It's by Mike Plum with a K. Very good documentary. The thing, the bits and pieces I've seen of it have been very good. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, let's watch Critical react to the documentary. Let's react to Critical reacting to the documentary by Mike Plum with a K. Personality. Oh! All right. So I'm gonna start off by telling you guys the extent of what I know about Boogie Two Nine Nine. See, couldn't even get his name right. See, <laughs> the extent of what I know about Boogie2988 is not a lot. Um, and so I think this video also seemed like it would be a good idea to, not a good idea, seemed like it would give a good introduction to who Boogie is. So for anybody just as in the dark as me or even more in the dark as me, then this video might be for you. It's, it is by Critical. Again, I, I think I said that in my opening, but uh, it's by Critical. Uh, or Penguin Zoe as he is on uh, on YouTube. So if you could go ahead and give that a watch. This is a topic that I've talked about on the podcast occasionally and sometimes on stream. But overall, I feel the entire lore and situation around Boogie 2988 over the last like five or six years has just been incredibly sad. Oh, I, I don't mean to break in so soon, but I agree. From what I've heard, everything I've heard has been incredibly sad. It is from divorce to, you know, failing at his weight loss, you know, a lot of just sad stuff happens to him. And it's like, it starts off as sad because because uh, he's a low cow. So like, he's a person you look at, you point and laugh at and expect to fail when he says he wants to lose a bunch of weight and stuff like that. So it is it mean to laugh at him? It, he's very much in the same boat as Amberlynn Reed, whereas he created this community around him and so that's why it's unfortunate sure you don't want the worst for him but he's getting what he deserves but there was a documentary just released about him which had boogie's stamp of approval his uh -huh. blessing he was a documentary, documentary filmmaker by the name of mike Klum spent the better part of like nine months filming boogie and nine going months. over oh. cataloging his life i've watched a lot of documentaries throughout my 29 years on this space rock and I feel like until the moon falls out of orbit, crashing into the earth, just as Roland Emmerich predicted in the classic Moonfall movie, I feel like this will remain one of the oh, most perplexing yeah. documentaries I've ever watched. Because I don't know why Boogie would agree to it. <laughs> it makes him look so bad. Yeah. The things I heard about it. Yeah, look look at that. Like, right off the bat. The things I've heard about it. I've, I've heard it, it makes him look like a villain. Worse than a locale like a disgusting slob, a, a creep, all of that. I took women on vacations and I took them out to fancy dinners and I took them to like Disneyland and shit. I'm not gonna show you all the main components of the documentary, I just wanna focus on two core ones here. If you're at all interested in the story of Boogie2988, I highly encourage you watch the whole documentary here. It's probably one of the most honest looks at anyone I've ever seen. Boogie is just an open and honest book here that's a little bit hard to, to read from because it is yeah. pretty eye-opening stuff. From, from what I've seen of it, yeah. I, I recommend a lot of people go watch it too. Uh, but, you know, I'm watching this because I don't have a lot of time right now. But I want to film something. But anyway, his fall from grace on the internet is an extremely well-cataloged downfall. It is. From the repulsive, awful things he said in the past mm -hmm. to his manipulative tendencies and his behavior, mm -hmm. all of it has led to Boogie going from a well-respected mm -hmm. content creator to basically a joke a or someone big, that's looked at in disgust for his behavior. Fall. 
So for those that don't know, Boogie is an OG YouTuber who was absolutely at the top of the game for a long time. Yeah. He won a fucking award for being a nice guy in the gaming community, basically. They used to call him the Mr. Rogers of the internet. I don't remember But then, that. Twitter and Reddit happened, and Boogie had this inability to shut up. He would constantly publicize the most foul opinions that he had about situations. He would always talk about the saddest and most depressing aspects of his life because it felt like he was addicted to being viewed as a victim. It felt like he loved the feeling of people viewing him as pathetic. And it's something that... Admittedly, I feel like a lot of people can be addicted to that because, I mean, you even look at someone like Daniel Larson, you know, they're they're addicted to the attention that comes with it. You know, no matter what, they're still getting attention. Bad, bad attention is attention. Bad publicity is, a, is publicity. I take as an as an advertising student and advertiser because I work in advertising now. uh Yes, <laughs> like bad publicity is still publicity. And so all publicity is good publicity because people will hear your name. I know he's touched on in the past that even has a level of self-awareness where he also recognizes how detrimental it's all been to his career and just downright self-destructive. But he just can't stop himself from just posting on Twitter every single private thing that should never be publicized mm -hmm. to strangers because he seems to just be enamored with that attention that he gets when it's viewed when he is viewed as like someone to feel sympathy for at all times. And it's just a, a really weird and sad set of circumstances. However, I, so I guess I knew more about Boogie than I thought. So that's first off, that's good. But second, like, yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> like I knew that. After watching the documentary, I'm starting to believe he is just not a good person. I was always under the impression that very deep down is a caring individual who had a good heart and good intentions and just got a little lost and confused along the way. But after seeing this and all of the worst aspects of his life that he just proudly highlights here, I just really am starting to think he's just not a good guy. Uh, so the first thing I yeah. want to show you is his... Well, I think it ruins people. I think fame ruins people. So it's like, I, me, I'm trying to get... A good enough following for my book to take off so I can get some people reading my books. I hope that doesn't change me, but it can. And so I think Boogie may have actually started off as a good person. I mean, he had a wife. He had plans for his life, stuff like that. And I think it just got to him. Addiction to sex workers. He has spent a yeah, pretty penny... Close on paying for sex as well as paying for like vacations and stuff for the sex workers to accompany him this and that and it also gives an insight into the way he views women which yeah. i think is a pretty repulsive perspective he has on a lot of it at yeah. least from what he describes here and one thing that becomes instantly recognizable is his sense of entitlement which becomes a prevalent point throughout this entire documentary where he believes that because he was a successful youtuber Anything he wants, he deserves. He should get. He is entitled to it. And that's the other half that internet stardom gets to you. You know, internet stardom, I think, still can leave people feeling very regular. You know, because you are, you are a star, but you're still a human. Versus, well, I mean, because all stars are human. You are a star, but you're still everyday people. Versus, like, you're a star and you're a celebrity. Some people forget that. I'm sorry, but internet stardom is not on the same level as movie stardom, music stardom, stuff like that. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. I, the I women don't. I dated were pretty, <laughs> sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA tens. With sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tens, and I think that's cool. So I deserve to go to Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like, I deserve that, and I want that, and I've never had it. Why do you deserve that? Yeah, I, the, the phrase deserve, first off, you don't deserve anybody's body. You don't deserve to hang out with somebody. You don't deserve somebody's time. You don't deserve that. So him using the term deserve Look, using this phrase, I deserve, is disgusting. 
Because you filmed your 20th Francis chugging Mountain Dew while pooping his pants and putting popcorn in a microwave video? Like, that, what? That as well. What, yeah. It's <laughs> such a deranged mindset that he believes. That too. It, it, like, he, he makes it sound like he gave to he gave to the homeless or that he saved somebody's life. He probably, you know, helped people out or whatever. But he makes it sound like he was a hero. No, you were an internet star. So first off, even if you were a hero, you don't deserve people like that. But then also to think what with the example that Charlie just gave here <laughs> equates to to that to make makes you deserve that is gross. He is entitled to all of these women wanting to slobber on his meat because he is a famous YouTuber. He he shouldn't be settling for an Arkansas eight. No, he deserves the LA tens. So he pays for sex workers because Boogie deserves that top shelf pussy with the pinky out. And to me, top this shelf. audacity is alarming. To me, yeah. this screams that he only views women as objects to be conquered sexually. Yeah. He shouldn't be settling for something that's an Arkansas. I wouldn't say that's just a woman thing. I would say that's just that's a human thing. He he sees humans other people people who aren't famous as just objects hey, that's beneath him have they looked at his subscriber count no what he deserves is the la tens so he gets into the sugar baby community she's definitely a little thicker than i necessarily would always go for but there's nothing wrong with that um i'm a 48 year old man oh, i never got to fuck a model that's something this I let me fuck a see. couple of models is that wrong a very important lesson to learn is nobody is entitled to anything other than a knuckle sandwich if you start calling me short. I'm kidding. You'd probably still beat my ass. But the point is, you don't deserve anything. To speak here like you deserve these women, you are entitled to these women because of your online success is so delusional. And, delusional. and speaking of delusion, him criticizing the lady for being thicker than thicker, he would normally yeah. go for is just downright ridiculous. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of richness right there. It's absurd. It just really seems like with the way he speaks about women throughout the documentary, he just views them as sexual props for his own pleasure. Really, that's the most important thing when it comes to... It's on the level of Onision, which stay tuned for that video, but it's on the level of Onision, how Onision views people. Or in Onision's case, people Onision has dated. Onision sees them as less than. It's very, it's very Onision-y. Women for him. He doesn't want to be caught dead with an Arkansas 8. Instead, it's all about the LA 10s, so that way he can fuck them. And then talking about people like that, to use that to, <laughs> Arkansas 10s and, and 8s and stuff like that. I mean, I've, I've, can, I've said somebody is a 10 out of 10, and, you know, I, I've, I've rated somebody on attractiveness because of whether I wanted to date this person. But... Ew. <laughs> like, ew, I feel scummy when I just say someone is hot, honestly. I feel kind of gross when I say that. But to, to compare people like that, like, that's very low. And that's what he cares about most when it comes to women. That's the impression I get listening to him talk about it. Now, this portion of the video isn't necessarily just focusing on his sex worker spending. It's talking about his reckless spending in general. Mm. At the height of Boogie's career, he was making so much money. Mm -hmm. Tons and tons, oodles of doubloons. And now, fast forward to, de to today, he is fundamentally Bro. broke. Yeah, he doesn't broke. have any money to his name left. So it's going over where all of it went, and a large chunk went to paying for sex workers, mm -hmm. as well as like gift cards that he would give them, which is crazy when they broke down the financial spending yeah, like, 500 dollars was allocated for gift cards yeah that's weird which is a weird <laughs> gift to give someone and like <laughs> it's fucking weird what is he somebody's grandmother what is that a thousand dollars for a purse so i guess he'd give them like a purse with like a gamestop gift card in yeah. there like hey go get yourself something nice toots maybe a couple pokemon card packs huh yeah maybe uh maybe a new video <laughs> gift cards what are fucking what, what those scammers <laughs> those, uh, those gift card scammers no gamer too it, like, the whole thing is just all about his spending habits, which has left him in a financial crisis. All of which is his own fault, which he also recognizes. His entire career's spiral into the shitter is entirely his own fault. Yeah. From not being able to stop saying the most awful things you could imagine during streams, to not being able to stop himself from posting the most private things about his life online, to not being able to stop himself from spending money on collectibles, 
uh, a bunch of luxury items, uh, terrible investments in like crypto, which he lost like six hundred thousand dollars, and Ugh. all of it is his own fucking fault. Yeah. And when he talks about himself and like his health struggles and a lot of the other things that are personal to his like day to day life, he speaks as though it's already kaput. Andrew really summed it up best. When Boogie talks about himself, he talks about himself as if he's been dead for 30 years. When he speaks, he's speaking as if he's already six feet under in the grave and he's like communicating as a force ghost like, man, I wish I took better care of my body. That's something he speaks about in the documentary with his girlfriend who's 29 years younger than him and he starts to recognize that in 10 years she's only going to be 30 and he might just be dead because of all the health problems he has from not taking care of himself. Uh, I just want to break in about the whole talking about himself like he's dead that's telling that's very telling i'm like i i is anyone else does anyone else like their 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 radars go off <laughs> that that's very telling that is a that is a depressed individual who wishes he was dead and he just speaks as who's given up basically so there's nothing he can do to fix it he's just like damn yeah i should have put more time it's defeatist it's defeatism which I hate. I've already been over this. I hate defeatist, but it's very defeatist. I'm into fixing my body a long time ago. You know, it's it's already. And that's the problem with these low cows. Amberlynn Reed, Wings of Redemption, uh, f f Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. They're they're defeatist. They think their lives are already over, and they're not. Amberlynn is only in her thirties, early thirties. I don't know how old wings of redemption is but he's had like five wives or something by now but like you they're still young enough they still have time everybody still has time in these cases to do something about themselves and it's like do you not realize if you were to do that you wouldn't be such a laughing stock anymore to pick your and it's not about i know i've listed a bunch of fat people but it's not about just the fat it's about the fact that these people the, the fat is a symptom of It's a symptom of how pathetic they are. <laughs> that like it's it's a symptom of that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it's come from them not taking care of themselves and them not caring enough to care for themselves. And it it's just part of the low countness. There are now there are low cows that are skinny. There are people who are pathetic that are skinny. But the people that I'm talking about just are not. I mean, there's even low tier God. He's not fat, but he's a low count and he's pathetic. Over when he can start now. He can still yes. start doing that now. He can still fix his career yes. now, work towards improving his career. But he just doesn't. And people love he to refuses see that to. Shit. He just speaks as though he's completely given up, which is another thing that becomes very clear in this documentary, where even though he feels this sense of entitlement, he feels as though he doesn't have to work towards anything. He just deserves all of these women. He deserves all of this money. All because at one point, he was a very successful YouTuber. Yeah, it's it's a point. fucking baffling and infuriating he mentality to minimum. witness in this film. Now, the next thing I want to showcase here, and the last thing that I'm going to focus on in the video, is him getting another job. Because YouTube has been collapsing on him, and the documentary filmmaker suggested maybe getting another job. It's also something everyone else in the world has suggested to him, getting mm -hmm. a real job. And so he finally decides to go through with it and do like a mock interview to see if maybe he can find oh, a position God. somewhere in the I saw this clip. Working world. Who's Don? Don on Boogie or Steve. Okay, yeah, yeah. what do you prefer to be called? Honestly, Steve. probably Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. No problem. Whatever You're you prefer. You're not aware of him or his content. And so you are here. Fresh start. Fresh start. They don't know who he is. They don't know his content. Today, because you are seeking employment. Yeah. Um, I did work at a small gaming store back in 2006, 2007. I am disabled, uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. Now, the, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically... Didn't even let her, didn't even let her talk. Yeah, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And Look at her when face. you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile. You should mention I'm also a felon. When I first saw wow. this clip, it wasn't in the documentary. It was floated around on Twitter. Yeah. I thought it was just part of a skit. I was I, blown yeah. away. I was like, damn, I Luke, he's got some real skit. acting chops now. He's really been hitting the thespian troop out there training. I, I was like, damn, kind of a fire, you know, comedy sketch. No. This is real. This is authentic. This is more real than my three-point jump shot. This is actually how he conducted himself during this interview. 
Now, know, of course, this isn't a show. like job interview per se. It's to try and help find him work. Mm-hmm. But he goes in here and just intentionally sabotages it. Yeah. This, this is not as though he's really taking it seriously. He's taking the piss here, if you ask me. And that becomes extremely clear because after the fact, he says that he can't just get a real job or anything. He has 4 million YouTube subscribers. A job is beneath him. Of course. So I feel as though he went in here. And that's what I mean when I say it's not just about women. It's about everyday people. He feels everyday people are below him. Now, of course, he very much has this view of women, obviously. He probably would still have a disgusting view over a woman who isn't an everyday person, over a woman who is a influencer just like he is. But it, it was an, it's an everyday people thing. He sees everyday people... Sorry, this face is kind of funny. He sees everyday people as below him, and it's disgusting. I can't stop saying that word enough. It's disgusting. And just intentionally wasted her time and his time. It's in the time of the documentary filmmakers, because this is just, no one would do this. To go in there and say shit like this, talking about if you Googled his name, you'd find out that he has rumors that he beat his wife, or that he's a pedophile. Like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Okay. Uh, What's never heard the pedophile rumors. Nature. Well, I've heard, you know, he's dating very young people, so I guess, yeah, very, very young women. So I guess that's probably where it's coming from. Your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability. I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm-hmm. If that is the attitude that you're going to have when you approach everything, then you can't. And Get you him. Get his ass. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so, uh, I mean... Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? It depended on the job, I would think. I love that she immediately picked up on what everyone else on the internet has also picked up on over the years. She nails it. it immediately. His mentality is, I can't, I can't, I can't. Just giving up on everything. It, that is how he's he approached everything online, <laughs> yet still feels a sense of entitlement where he shouldn't need to put a whole lot of effort into YouTube or anything. People should just be giving him money for existing. She picks up on that mindset right away. That's how clearly he wears this on his sleeve. It's his whole personality yeah. of just feel sorry for me, and here's the reasons why you should feel sorry for me. And it's super upsetting because it doesn't have to be that way. Again, He's still alive. He can fix things, work towards things, improve things if he wanted to, but he fucking refuses to. And when the lady does say, like, hey, look, you know, it's not impossible. You do have some challenges. He decides to go even harder to make it even more difficult by saying, oh, I also worked in the porn industry, to which she's dumbfounded. Like, would you really say that during a real interview? Because he's clearly just trying to ruin this. He doesn't want a real working job outside of YouTube or anything. And he, be, he makes that super clear with this phone call that he, or with this message he leaves the documentary filmmaker. Violent crimes or sexual crimes. Um, hey, Mike. Uh, listen, dude. Uh, I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I, I'm not going to walk into some job when I have 4 million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content. Go lay down. Oh my goodness. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Yeah, so I mean, things aren't great. Um, Net worth. Negative 65. People still mad at me on YouTube. Negative that 50, fucking ego is infuriating. One of the OG YouTubers, I can't just yeah. get a fucking job. This is ridiculous. Four million subscribers on YouTube. That is, that's for plebeians, not for boogie. I'm, I'm gonna, it, I'm gonna, it, pull, I'm gonna say, he sounds like he sounds like he thinks he's like Buzz Aldrin or something. He sounds like he thinks he did something. Like I, I hate to. I know YouTubers touch people. I know they do. I know YouTubers reach people, help people out. Boogie is not one of those people. <laughs> Boogie is not one of those uh, one of those YouTubers. Boogie has done nothing to show for it. Like I, I really, I, I can't, I can't bring to my mind the good things that Boogie has done. I can only think of the bad things he's done. And so to talk like that, like, oh, I, like, it's so gross. It's so egotistical and gross. At one point in this documentary, he mentions that he must have, like, covert narcissism or something. And he absolutely is a narcissist. Yeah. 100%. Like, I'm not, 
a medical professional or anything. Like I can't actually. I wouldn't say narcissistic personality disorder, but I would say it has it has been brought it has been brought about by being very affluent. Affluenza. <laughs> to diagnose it, but everything that is showcased in this documentary feels like it's narcissistic personality disorder. What's crazy is I haven't even touched on the saddest parts of the documentary. The the bits and pieces I've loosely touched on in this video here don't even make up what I believe is the hardest to stomach portions of the documentary. Mike Klum and the team really did an incredible they job did. with this piece. So again, really if you're at all interested, check it out. He dude has 13 I, I don't know if I don't know if I'll cut out that at the bottom or not. The dude has 13,000 subscribers and he put together something like that. Like that. I don't know who Mike Klum is, so maybe he is somebody more famous than I know. But, you know, really good, really good looking, good stuff. No part of him that seems to actually want to change for the better. No. He just views it as he's already defeated. Yep. So he's just going to continue being self-destructive, I yep. guess. When I just, I, I don't he's understand it. Digging and there digging. is still so much opportunity and time for him to actually improve his life and over the last five or six years he's talked about that a lot about how he's going to do this that and get better that's at this and that do. and he just doesn't that's what amberlin reed has been doing for 10 years he just refuses to so yeah i, I just wanted to talk about this because i just finished the documentary we also talked about it on the podcast that'll be up on the official youtube channel sometime in the next couple days it's just sad it's just fucking unbelievably sad like many others, I was a fan of Boogie 2988 yeah. years ago. And to see the mask fully come off and you get to actually see, see who he is as a person is, is shocking. It's disgusting. Uh, but anyway, Sad yeah, that's about it. So, yeah. But yeah, you can really see it in, in Charlie's face. He's, he's heartbroken. It's the same thing as what happened with Colleen Ballinger. <laughs> These OG YouTubers, Shane Dawson, coming out and being discovered as awful disgusting people it's sad i don't think they were back in the day i don't know maybe onision was always been disgusting he seems like he's always been disgusting but still maybe back in the day like shane dawson and colin ballinger weren't awful people but like they are now all right that's enough now it hurts seeing these beloved characters fall off one by one. Some of these people inspired me to create my own channel for in the first place. Yet here we are years later and they're not falling prey to cancel culture. They're just cancelable, cancelable people. Either way, there's still time for them to turn it all around and, and regain some of that fame. You know, they are beloved people, but uh, I don't see that happening. So I hope Boogie has been practicing his ukulele. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.